Hello everyone, welcome to BT Talks. Today I have the pleasure of having Mary Solomon, the founder and creative director of Bergman Interiors based in London. She will be joining soon. Let me see if I can add her directly. Thanks to everyone who's joining. Hey Chris, how are you doing? I have Mike joining, Carrie joining, a lot of London people. JB, my man. <laughs> Hold on one second. So Mary will be joining in a minute. All right, there's a little issue. I just requested for you, Mary. You should see it. Oh, there we go. Thanks for everyone who's always joining my BT Talks. I really appreciate it. So let me see if Mary is able to get in. I send another request. <laughs> the beauty of technology. A lot of people joining, that's cool. All right. Hold on. I send another request to Mary. Hello. There she is. <laughs> nice to see you, Mary. <laughs> you too. How are you, Benji? Very good. Always good to see you smiling. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, absolutely. It's everything. So, so here I am. It's, we are in our library of uh, Bergman. So welcome to my library. There you go. So uh, I like to, so first of all, thank you for being a guest on this show. I, I really appreciate it. I think we're going to have a really cool conversation. So first thing, uh, introduce yourself to those who don't know you and what you do and how you came to being in the world of design. Okay. My name is Marie and I'm the founder and creative director of Bergman Interiors. And uh, we started, we launched Bergman four years ago. I was back then working for Hirsch Bedner Associates, which is one of the most respected companies and interior architect uh, globally. And then we won many, many awards and we decided, Alvin and myself, why don't we launch our own studio? And as everyone, we thought like, it's all about design, about talent, and I couldn't be more wrong. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Absolutely. No, d design is definitely a big part of it. Um, but as well, business, it's like every, every other business, marketing, uh, legals, finance, finding clients, um, just growing. And we design basically hotels, uh, high-end residential developments, wellness, and July last year, we started Njord by Bergman Design House. And Njord does only super yachts. And we partnered with uh, our partner, Sarah Colbon in Njord. So it's been going cool. absolutely phenomenal. Thank you for so having you're, me. So you're, you're designing everything from beautiful homes to hotels, to gyms, to spas, and also to yachts. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and last week we were having a podcast with uh, Carol Annett and she said like it's a bit un uh, like it's not common for a designer to do all. And I said like, yes, we do have this in Britain. I would say some people see themselves more of a, of a hotel designer, some trying to do both, but they are more into residential designer. And when we started Bergman, I always say as cheeky as it is, I'm a designer full stop. I like designing cupcake holders, a side think, of bottle. But I think you can bring different elements, you know, from your experience and from your sense of design. You know, if you understand good design, you can design a beautiful home, you can design a hotel, you can design a yacht, you can design a lot of things. And I think you don't have to be just, you know, a residential interior designer. You Absolutely. can do so many things. Absolutely, Where, because it's all about humans, right? You need to understand how the body works and what you like and psychology and the effect of lighting on you and material. So once you understand this as human, you can design spaces regardless, regardless where the space is. Where, where do you get most of your inspiration for design? 
Oh, many things, many things. I get it lots from theaters, uh, from plays, uh, yeah. fashion, and, and most of all nature. You, you need just to see some, sometimes the good design sometimes is, is less, is more, because it's all about- I agree nature. with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's all about maybe, especially if it's residential and it's in the middle of the countryside or uh, on the coast, and then you don't want to actually clutter it with many things. It's all about those things. That's that's more and more of a trend. Um, you know, I absolutely love interior design, and I follow all that's going on. And more and more, I feel that you know people want less in a very like nice design. They want it to be cozy as well not just something that's super well designed and it doesn't feel warm. It needs to have that warm element. And you were talking about nature, which I believe, you know, it's not just a trend because I see it. I mean, especially here in Miami, there's a lot of, you know, places, whether it's homes or hotels, you have, you know, the one hotels here, who is, which is very much nature oriented and people love it. And I think there's this sense of belonging and wellness that is very important um so no you can you can you know the, the 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 design trends are what they are but also i believe that in the past well the years before you know our parents and everything they like to collect a lot of things and they like to have a lot of things in their home because they're attached to something i think it's emotional but now moving forward you know in our generations people want less and want something that's uh well designed and that's cozy Yes, and, and I would say as well what we noticed more and it started two years ago that as well the understanding of luxury is changing, but not all, only, but also acquiring experiences. So maybe 11 years ago, 15 years ago, people would acquire things. They want this because it's the best or, or, or. And now what we get from clients is acquiring experiences and not just for hotels, which is more common, but in their houses. So we see that everyone is asking rather than I want that style, which was a trend, like I want it art deco or I want this. They don't say it by the style. They would say, how do I live in my own house, finding different experiences from room to another, from morning to evening. So I think that as well drives how the understanding of luxury started to change massively from a material to rather owning that feeling in your own house. Of course, and I think today, actually, everything is based on experience rather than, uh, you know, really owning a lot of things. But I think now home has become one of the most important places for human beings uh, after this whole pandemic, and it will continue to be. But then within the home or even within hotels or within any place we go, I really believe people will value the experience more than anything else. Yes, absolutely. And even the hotels, the, the conventional hotels are totally changing. So we're designing uh, two of them at the moment in London and they are not a hotel bedroom. It's a hotel apartment. Yeah. And it, it, it's truly feeling like home because people are basically saying, OK, if we are locked in a country that we're not from that country, they are living in the hotel and they want it to feel like yeah. home. So even hotels are changing. So the whole dynamic, we especially after COVID, now we do appreciate our homes. Before, two years ago, people would say like, you know what, I will actually save my money to have this amazing trip with my family. Now people are saving money to renovate their houses, which is becoming more and more every day. And they are buying art and really lovely stuff because they now understand the true luxury of having a good home. And that, that is a wise investment. I mean, this is what I would do, you know, as I prepare to you know, soon buy a home, whether it's a condo or a house, you know, I would also save money to make my own reno renovation. And that's actually an investment, a good investment, because this is where I'm going to live. And this is where I want to feel good. And this is, and that, so, you know, so there's two questions I wanted to ask you as we talk about all this. What is your definition of luxury? Because you mentioned luxury experiences, and I think everybody has a different uh, yeah. definition, but what is your definition of luxury? Many things, Benji. I would say luxury is time. Luxury is privacy. Luxury is intimacy. Luxury is the quality of air and sound you have. Luxury is the, 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 the as well having clean water in your house and what filter you're using. Yeah. Um, and, and that is the real luxury. And then the more static one is how you feel in your space. It doesn't yeah. matter how mm -hmm. expensive it is, but it has to, to feel what you are 
to be actually speaking with your personality rather than just a style that looked trendy in a magazine. Trend comes and goes, right? What yeah. is trendy today? It will be tacky in the next five months. Exactly. You go for the timeless and you speak, who are you? Who are you? Exactly. Your... Yes. Ma Margot, our friend Margot was saying actually luxury is a lifestyle and it's true, you know, for, or even a mindset. I, I agree. Mindset, you know, and, and lifestyle, but you know, the definition of luxury, obviously there's a lot of elements, but I think it's being in, 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 in a place that you love and you feel good. And there's a lot of elements and that comes to, I think also design that make, yeah. make it a luxurious place. It doesn't need to be the, you know, to have all the nicest brands or having the most expensive. It's more who you are, I think. And it That's, has to feel timeless as well. Because if it, if it is any property, I would say, whether it's for rent or for yeah. owning or development or your mm -hmm. own home, the more it is designed in a timeless way, the more it, you will not actually need to renovate it. It, it mm -hmm. will be for at least 10 to 12 years feeling as if you did it yesterday. And this is what we're trying to achieve in all our projects, regardless, regardless what is the project. Because think about it. It's a pure investment. And you... Let's say you bought a house or you're buying a house and you want to live in it 10 years and then you want to even leave the house and start renting it out. Do it from the beginning in a really timeless way. Exactly. Because once you decide to make it buy to let, all you want, all you, what you need to do is a lick of paint. But the kitchen's been done perfectly, the bathroom. So it has to be from the start. And that's, you know, actually prior to uh, this conversation, we're discussing about the important topics we wanted to discuss. And you know, renting versus buying and the importance uh, when renting or when buying of design. Yes, absolutely. It, it helps in, uh, in both and we see it every day. Properties are changing what was a house, main house now it's becoming buy to let and people are buying second and third and fourth house with rent as a, as a good example. Like you, you understand, so as designers, we do research about the market we are we are in how much the property are renting for in the mm -hmm. same buildings and in the in the buildings around and then you say okay how would interior make it rent for 800 more which is a big jump in some of the areas and then when you do those elements and then you photograph it and you put it on the market actually one of them is my own house that i'm renting it at and we got way higher than the market rate because it gave the experiences it's yeah. not just the sofa, we, it's the whole experience. We, we, we have uh, my friend uh, Jack Harris, uh, your French advisor from Night Frank. He sells some beautiful, he's based in London, but he sells some beautiful homes in uh, the south of France. I don't know if you follow him, but you should. Uh, mm -hmm. And you'll see some, some homes are, are spectacular from a design standpoint. Um, yeah. But yeah, so to come back to, you know, uh, renting versus buying, you, you really have to, so obviously, you know, when you rent, you're probably arriving in a new city and you're discovering and you're exploring the lifestyle and the neighborhood and, you know, but then, you know, I think I always, I believe in ownership and I, I think, you know, when you're ready to buy, um, mm -hmm. whether you buy a home or you want to actually build the home, you have to already think of how do you want your home? How do you want to design it? Work with the right people and think of it as when you're going to live there for the next five, six, seven, eight more years. And then you're going to be, oh, maybe I'm going to, you know, upgrade, but this home, I'm going to rent it out and I yes. want to keep the value to it. So yes. the design elements, I have to, you know, obviously, like you said, you can always repaint, you can always do all these things, but the element like the kitchen, the bathroom, um, some little details, you know. And the I, hidden details. And the hidden just, details as well. Yeah. So, yeah. so that is part of like, people as well are extremely educated now. The social yes. media had made everyone has a huge access to the biggest library worldwide. People understand luxury, people understand details and people understand that it doesn't mean that I'm specifying the sofa because it's expensive. I would rather something maybe that is more functional and that is luxury. So I feel Again, investing in your own house or to buy to let, it's a pure asset. Exactly. Because it, it will make your time and energy. Time, energy, and money are all hand in hand working. In I power. couldn't agree more because that you, you pointed out to something that is very important. You know, whether you decide to buy an apartment, a house, 
with a view, with a garden, whatever it is. And then, you know, the, the home you're going to live in, you're going to spend your time there with family. You're going to spend time maybe there working. So your home office, you maybe want to put a, a gym. And all this is going to, like, we'll come, come back to the point of time, which is super important, you know, and, yeah. and well-being. So you have to have these elements in mind. You can't just choose a home to rent or to buy without thinking of your well-being and what you want and what makes you happy. And also, so you're more efficient. I mean, think of it. You buy a home or an apartment that you want something spacious. You want something that has light. I'm a big fan of floor to ceiling windows, high ceilings, and a lot of light, preferably also, you know, views. But for me, it, it changes my daily life. You know, if I have a, an apartment or a house with a lot of light. <laughs> yes, you have to fall in love with the potential of the property because we get as well uh, now asked frequent, uh, frequently more with state agent, can you come on the meeting when they are selling the house? Because some of the clients, they absolutely can vision how that home will feel like when it is renovated. Some, some, some clients cannot. So we go and we have a walk with them, with the state agent, and we start pointing the eye on what you're going to see. Ignore the old wallpaper. Ignore the, the, the worn, really bad, ugly carpet that never changed from the 60s or whatever. Think of the potential. And we usually put either mood boards for them, having some textures as well so they understand. But let them actually, you as a designer or an architect, you always need to point people where to look how to fall in love with, this, with the space and the potential. As well, budget, I hear it a lot. Budget is a myth. It doesn't mean when I say it's a myth that if you're not wealthy and you don't have this amount of money, you'll end up with a, with a bad house full of Ikea. No offense to Ikea, I own Ikea as no, well. Yeah. But, but what I mean that people think like, oh, my budget is this, I cannot have these houses I see on the media. Absolutely not. A good designer, a good architect, they know how to even manipulate their budget. Where to invest in the house, where the most aesthetic it is important, should I pay for the functionality? Do I pay for a sound system? Or actually that is now a luxury that I don't need, but I would rather have a really good kitchen performing. But they so will it, really help you find all the elements and also, like you said, budget is not an issue because you have the relationships and the knowledge absolutely. of you know, finding what's necessary according to whatever you know budget you have for the design of your home yes and and then you play with the budget which room will take the most of the love of that budget and which room needs to be maybe less and maybe which room we can renovate it three years from now because at the moment it's functional enough so a budget understand your budget never be shy about it whether it's how low or how high it is just understand it reflect on it and know exactly where the money is going I can't, I can't wait to have you in Miami. We're going to go with my clients and we'll do a few tours of properties and you can advise them on that. <laughs> I, I, I would love it. We, we get clients like paid lots amount of money in, um, and then the AV in the audio or, or all the uh, Lutron system or, or even automatic curtains. And when they spend more and more time in the house, they feel like we have spent so much money maybe that we shouldn't have at the time felt a good idea. Always have a conversation and all with knowledge is power. Speak to different people, understand, don't take the, the first sale and yeah, I will do the audio and this and this. Understand how it will actually change your life. If it makes your life easy, do it. Yeah. If it complicates your life, walking with an iPad all the day, not sure which to actually press in and out or on and off, then it's gimmicks. So technology as well, and it's something that we are really taking care of at the moment, especially with hotels. Again, it's becoming more, less is more. Because the hotels have taken the technology so far in the past seven to 10 years. And now people say, you know what? I want it to be simple. I want to come after 10 hours flight on and off. So exactly. technology is to ease your life, not to complicate it. It is. Put, put your budget in the things that you would treasure every single day as that amazing wardrobe that doesn't ruin, ruin your silk blouse. Yes. That is a good investment. Exactly. So I also wanted to say as we're, we're coming close to the end of the conversation. So as of this week, I also became the ambassador of Bergman Interiors here in Florida. And I'm very happy about it. 
<laughs> we are uh, very, I'm very excited, excited about and... this. So we're going to do some great work, you know, together. We have a lot of uh, things in, in the pipeline, but Mary is someone I, I, I connected, when was that? In January, uh, over Clubhouse, believe it or not. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's an amazing gang. I love it. I love we have, that we, we have an amazing uh, family through Clubhouse, if I can say. Um, yeah. But we, we connected through a lot of people across the world, around the world of real estate, whether it's interior design, developers, real estate brokers. And, um, you know, we connected with Mary and her energy is incredible. And I actually, you know, really well connected with her company. And I think it makes a lot of sense. So that's how I, you know, became the ambassador. And I know there's a lot of things we're going to do together. <laughs> I'm 100% sure we're coming to Miami in the next, hopefully, fingers crossed, four months. And then we're flying from Miami to Chicago for one of our projects. And then we're going to Vancouver. So it will be North America heavy trip. And we cannot wait because it's been ages now, like almost 18 months, we wanted to break into the American market. I absolutely love the people. They are very passionate, very positive. They take opportunity and chances. That's and the difference. That's the, that that's the big the difference. difference. <laughs> people grab the opportunity like this. And, and I love that approach. I feel like it just makes me very uh, alive. So yeah. I, I feel, I I feel all our friends in the, in the UK or in Europe, but in the UK, who, whom I love, uh, crave to be in the U.S. because it's true the, the dynamics are different. Um, you know, nothing is perfect yes. in, no, in, in all places, but I, it's true here in whatever city you are, whether it's New York, Miami, L.A., Chicago, uh, even in Canada, you know, Vancouver, there's, there's, you know, there's a great energy and there's some great people and uh, people, you know, take opportunities here, take risk, and uh, that's how a lot of things happen. Yeah, I love it. Let's take yeah. risks and let's uh, enjoy it. Thank you so much for having Thank me. You, Mary. For everyone it. that uh, that came. My pleasure. Board. Thank you to yeah. everyone who who joined the live conversation. Really appreciate it, Mary. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. If you're not following Mary or Bergman Interiors, make sure to do so. If you have any questions to Mary or me, feel free to DM us directly. Mm -hmm. And Mary, I look forward to seeing you soon in one of our clubhouse rooms <laughs> and in Miami. Yeah. And in Miami or London, uh, whenever I can come to London. And I please ask everyone, go to Clubhouse, start joining our group uh, for social state and luxury uh, listing and everyone, because the amount of experience and the amount of knowledge about um, properties, it, it, I just like learn so much. We, in the we learn a lot. Group. And there's and a great, great group. Thanks to Yogi and Daniel Yogi. For, yeah. for having put this together. Uh, but we were able to create a real incredible community of yes. great people. And it's also, you know, where we can get a lot of knowledge. Absolutely. Thank you okay. so much. Thank you, Mary. Have a wonderful evening. You as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.